Hello everyone and welcome to the first installment of Cisco's Better Together demo series. Today we're going to be focusing on the integration points between Cisco SD-WAN, which is our cloud-delivered WAN overlay architecture, and Cisco Umbrella, which is our cloud-delivered security platform. And what you see in front of you is our current lab topology. We have a single data center with multiple branches, and we're going to be focusing on branch two. So as you can see, we have a Cisco SD-WAN appliance that is connected to an MPLS circuit and an internet circuit. We also have what we call a service VPN, which is connecting all of our end user devices um, to these WAN circuits. The laptop that you see there has unfettered access to the internet. And what we're going to be seeing over the course of this demo is how we can leverage the integration between Umbrella and Cisco SD-WAN to create and enforce policy from a centralized uh, dashboard um, and have those policies be pushed dynamically and applied to our SD-WAN overlay. And what you're seeing here is a remote desktop session to that branch to PC. And as you can see, we have uh, currently no protection via Umbrella, meaning our DNS requests are not being sent to Umbrella. We also have unfettered access to port 444, and we have full access to social media, specifically Facebook. So what we want to accomplish ultimately is to create policies um, for denying port 444 and also uh, limiting access to Facebook. But before we do that, we have to actually configure the integration between Umbrella and Cisco SD-WAN. So what you see in front of you right now is the Umbrella dashboard. And we're going to go ahead and navigate to our where we can generate APIs. This is going to be the primary way and the way um, that we're going to be able to integrate between these two platforms and make sure that when we create policy within Umbrella that it gets pushed down and enforced to our SD-WAN overlay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click Create. And once we hit Create, there's going to be a few pieces of information that we're going to want to uh, copy um, that are going to be critical, into, uh, critical to our configuration, um, which is our uh, key and secret. So I'm going to go ahead and, and copy the key and paste it to a notepad session. Now it should be mentioned that um, if if you depending on the subscription you have with Umbrella, uh, some of these steps actually can be bypassed. Uh, the 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 actual um, getting the API key and secret uh, can be done through the vManage, which is our management platform for Cisco SD WAN. So I've gone ahead and gotten the key and secret, and the last piece I need to grab is the organization ID. Um, these are important because this is the only way that um, the uh, Cisco SD-WAN solution will know how to find your specific instance uh, of Umbrella. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that number down. And once we have all the information we need uh, around the uh, API, uh, we can hop over to the Cisco vManage. Uh, and this is the management console for Cisco SD-WAN. Uh, this front page here gives you uh, high level information about the health of the fabric. But what we want to do is actually uh, create a configuration template uh, that will allow us to integrate directly with Umbrella. So since we're operating on a VEDGE Cloud device in branch two, I type in VEDGE Cloud, and then we're going to scroll down um, to other templates. And there's a SIG credentials template that we can leverage. And as you can see, we're gonna give this uh, you know, template a name. We're gonna call it SIG Credentials, and we can give it a description as well. And, and, and below, you'll see there's space for us to um, put in our organization ID, our, our key, and secret. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. You can also see right below that screen um, a little button that says Get Keys. Uh, this is what I was referring to earlier, where if you have uh, the higher level subscription of Umbrella, 
um, we can integrate directly and pull those keys from the Umbrella dashboard uh, without you actually having to go into Umbrella and do the copy and pasting, um, which we do have to do in the demo. So after we've inputted those components, um, we can go ahead and hit save. So that feature template is now saved. The next piece we have to configure is uh, the tunnel to Umbrella. So what we want to do is uh, on that connection to the internet we have on our vEdge, uh, we want to make sure that all internet traffic is actually sent to Umbrella. So we're going to go ahead and create another feature template and we're going to go under VPN and there's an option for secure internet gateway. So we're going to give this template a name as well. And then we're going to call it a SIG tunnel. And what we're going to do is build two discrete IPsec tunnels from the branch to vEdge appliance to Umbrella. So we're going to go ahead and specify an interface name. Uh, we're going to first call this uh, IPsec1. Um, as you can see below too, um, we can configure it for a primary connection and a secondary connection, which we are going to do. So my first interface name will be IPsec1 and the source interface will be uh, GIG00, uh, which is our interface that is connected directly to our internet circuit. So once we've done that, I can hit add. And like I mentioned, uh, we want high availability. So if we lose uh, connectivity via the first tunnel, uh, we have another tunnel that can service um, our integration point between Umbrella and our WAN overlay. So going to use GIG00 again, we're gonna call this second IPsec tunnel. You guessed it, IPsec2. And then we're going to make sure that we click uh, the secondary option and hit add. And lastly, uh, we can pick our active and uh, backup. Now, after we've done that, we can hit save. So now we've successfully added a template for our SIG credentials and also building the IPsec tunnels up to the Umbrella Cloud. So the next thing we need to do is apply this configuration to branch two. So we have a device template, which is how vManage uh, manages the uh, overall configuration of a vEdge device. So we're going to go ahead and under VPN zero, which is our transport uh, VPN, we're going to add a uh, add our um, SIG tunnel config. So as you can see, our, our template popped up there. And then under other templates, uh, there's a SIG credentials uh, option. So we're going to pick our SIG credentials template that we made. And after we've selected those options, we can hit update. And once we hit update, um, it's going to, vManager is going to generate the config uh, for that device. And when we hit next, uh, we can actually preview the configuration. Um, this will show you um, the entire configuration of the vEdge device. And if you didn't want, if you were managing this all via CLI, you could still technically copy and paste that CLI into the CLI of, of, of the vEdge if you were doing uh, CLI managed uh, devices. But after that, you hit next. Um, and then what it's going to do is push out that configuration. You can expand that menu as well, and it'll give you some insight into what step in the process um, vManage is at with configuring the device. This usually takes a few seconds. And there we go, we've successfully deployed it. Um, the next piece we have to configure is uh, what we call a service route. So we want to make sure that any traffic that's destined for the internet will be sent to Umbrella. So this is what we call a service route. And because we're working with VPN 10 in our branch 2, uh, we're going to edit our VPN 10 uh, feature template for branch 2. So I'm going to go ahead and hit edit. And there are, as you can see, a number of different options that we can select. Um, but what we want to focus on is a service route. So we're going to go ahead and click new service route. And we're going to be using our default route. So 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. 
and then hit add. And once we've done that, uh, we can hit update. And as you can see, this is a, a template that's already been applied to a device. So it's going to take us to that same screen we just saw uh, where it's going to be pushing a new uh, config to branch two. And we can scroll down and see that uh, under VPN 10, uh, we'll see that service route that we configured in the template right there. So once we confirm that, we can hit configure device. And then we play the waiting game for a few seconds. Now, after this is completed, uh, we'll have successfully uh, integrated our Cisco SD-WAN overlay fabric uh, with Umbrella. And that's when we can start building the policies we discussed earlier. So remember, uh, we're going to be blocking port 444. Um, we're going to be blocking uh, Facebook as well. And we wanted to make sure that all internet traffic from VPN 10 uh, will go through Umbrella. So we're going to go over and just make sure that we have our tunnel stood up. And as you can see, we see site 400 um, and then our system ID 10.4.0.1 and the IPsec tunnel 1 and 2. Um, and as you can see, our first tunnel here is actually terminated to the New York data center. Um, and if we go back and hit um, the second tunnel, uh, we're, we're actually connected to the Ashburn, Virginia umbrella uh, data center. And that's all done dynamically. So now that we have that integration set up, we can start building our policies. So we're going to go to policies uh, and, and firewall policy. Now, obviously, there's a lot that we can do with Umbrella, um, but for what we're trying to accomplish today, we just need to build first a firewall rule. So here we have a default allow any any. Uh, we just hit add, and we're going to call this uh, firewall rule, rule block port 444. And you can match against a lot of different criteria, but for us, uh, we want the destination port. So we're going to go ahead and type in 444. <clears throat> and then we are going to make sure that the rule action is set to block. And then we can optionally also turn on uh, logging. So anytime this rule gets hit, uh, we can visualize that in the umbrella dashboard. So now we have that rule saved and it is active. So we are good there. And the next piece we want to accomplish is blocking Facebook. So we're going to go ahead and, and click on web policies and we can expand our default web policies. Again, there's a lot of control that we have over uh, what users have access to. But for us, what we need to focus on is our application settings. So we're going to go ahead and hit edit. And um, as you can see, there's a ton of different built in um, applications uh, we can uh, create policy around, but we want to focus on Facebook. So I'm going to type in Facebook and hit uh, hit uh, block. Obviously you can choose uh, just full out bl uh, blocking access to Facebook. You can just block posts and shares. Uh, and we are then going to hit set and return. So once we have actually saved these policies, that's, that's it. Um, those policies are now going to be activated for our branch two VPN 10. So if we do go back over to our branch two desktop in VPN 10 and we open Google Chrome, we can see that we are now uh, protected by umbrella. All of our internet traffic, our DNS is getting resolved by umbrella. And if we hit port, port 444, um, we're gonna see that we're not gonna have access to that same page we saw uh, in the beginning of our demo, right? We're just gonna see that spinning wheel at the, at the top of Chrome. Um, so that means that our policy has been uh, successfully applied. Um, and then uh, if we navigate to, navigate to Facebook, uh, you can see that that um, actually has been blocked as well and we get a umbrella uh, block screen. And with that, we've successfully integrated Cisco SD-WAN with Cisco Umbrella, truly bringing these two solutions together to deliver uh, a more secured architecture for our organization. And with that, 
I'd like to thank you for watching today's video and we'll see you on the next demo.